Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Dark Souls 2 Lore Through. Um, I realized why I didn't remember what other uh, areas we haven't been to, because I want to erase this area from my mind. Can you tell this isn't my favorite DLC? So this, um... This DLC has enemies which are, like, very similar to the Bone Wheels of Dark Souls 1. More similar than... Oh, they're already coming in, are they? better with my uh <laughs> like with my uh like my deck setup I mean I guess I can't just switch cuz it's uh, it's all my stats Okay, okay. Let's see if we can just get down here. Oh god. This is it. So it's basically that guy that I can't run by. Which means that I can't really run by anyone. Which sucks. I like how this door is like pried open. We also have to go up there again and there. Ugh. There's a chest up there, and I'm sure there's more chests up there. It's not an actual shortcut. Okay, I think you can get by these dogs pretty easily. Although, this person's gonna come chase after us. I mean, I guess I could make a run for it, but I... Ugh, I hate this area. I'm just getting, uh... Just getting cynical right now. If I can pull this off. Get 
guess they leave you alone once you get in here. Like how the frost disappears. Uh, I don't know what to do with these guys. I just feel like I'm too slow for them. They can always come right in here. Okay, unless they die in one hit. Touching them hurts you. Okay. And there's a lot more of them. Why? Okay. Hexer Nikolai. Okay. Oh my dear lord. What in the heck are those? Did he he just cost Trank to walk a piece? Or whatever. Promised walk of peace. Bye. So he has a ring on, which. Oh, weird. He has to, like, leave the session for me to not be affected by that. I've never seen these guys fall. Oh my dear lord. You see those guys in the dark chasms of the abyss or whatever. And they drop bonfire aesthetics all the time. Oh my dear lord. Wasn't interested in going that way anyway. So there's other stuff up here.
Oh, they're way up there. Oh, see? Right there, it did full damage. For bolt stone. I don't need bolt stone. Is this where the... I love this too. They, they're highlighting the two rings. One, you can... One, you can make yourself look like a phantom, regardless of what you are. And one, you can make yourself look real, no matter what you are. Oh, he ate a... I'm just trying to get to my bonfire. That's all I want, dude. So you're gonna come down and pretend to help me again? another huh where did he go think carefully what I think it's, you know, it's hugely exploitable, but, like, I don't. So, yeah, I think he's the guy... fighting where I got the notorious greatsword. Wish I gave him names and stuff. Okay, so yeah, we're just trying to get back down. Yeah, so what's over here? Is there anything over there? Nope. of items here. Now, there was a uh, job of the hut here. Pretty sure. But I think there's also an invader. Oh. Okay. Another covetous demon. Is he bigger? Oh, 
god. Does so much damage. I think this is just from software trying to prove that they could make this guy hard. Because the the original one's not hard. Oops. he drop. Ivory Warrior Ring. Okay. Ring of the Guardians of Elium Weiss. Attacks greatly decrease enemy stamina. Elium Weiss existed to subdue the raging flame, but when the ivory gates were flung open, the land grew cold and lifeless. So yeah, like, we've read about this uh, event on a f number of different points. The point at which they froze the whole Elium Weiss due to the protecting the chaos. Okay. So I guess he was just sitting up here. And then he heard us come in. He was like, I better go take care of that guy. Kill him. Okay. Do you remember there's a bit of gauntlet here? paths. This is the gauntlet I'm thinking of. Oh, okay, so I guess I have a shortcut right back. The thing is, we don't want to do this. Okay. We don't want to do this fast, is basically all I was trying to say.
Okay. I believe this is the last L.A.M. Lois night thing that we're going to get up here. So, um, there's a cool... I don't know, mechanic or thing. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Oh god. One of these guys. Whatever end. Oh, I hate these guys. Now this is a big place. I like it. Those are some weird buildings over there with no windows. Okay. Yeah, this is the mechanic here. I thought you interacted with it, but I guess you can just push it. So it kills those guys and then creates a shortcut back to here. <laughs> Which we don't really need at this point. I mean, I don't imagine we're going to die, but it's cool. Try right. Pointless. Okay. Well, let's unlock our last guy. So, I thought there was um, four of these guys, but I guess there's one. I think there's probably one there. And then there's, well, we get three of them. So you get one for free. Maybe to just show you what it, like, how it works. Um, Alright, I'm just going to go back at this point, and then I'm going to, I'm going to attempt the Ivory King. Now, I actively dislike this fight. For sure. Oh, look at Till. Just because. It's such a grind. You know, you just fight all these guys. And then you fight the. So, yeah, there's the four guys. Um, whoa. 
Is this a guy? Hopefully it's not too bad. Also, it makes no sense that we can survive that. But yeah, I mean, this to me looks like it's... You know. The actual chaos. Can you not backstab these guys? Yeah, like, look how tough these guys are. They're not even, like... Oh, gosh. Do something with these Lois souls too, I forgot what it was. Always go for the pyromancers. A certain point. Oh yeah, and then these guys go and block up the entrances. They only three do that. I love how Twiggy stays apart thing. Okay, so we have two blocked up and then I guess the only the one left that never gets closed up. We have two guys left and then the old the Ivory King is coming out in a dramatic entrance. Super dramatic. This is like Stargate shit. And he's tough. But I have enough de decoys. Okay, no one's hit him yet. That did 41 damage. Okay, nice. So we can block them all off. I'm going to kill this guy. Okay, keep an eye on him. Okay, now he's dead. And now none can spawn, which is great. And we have three helpers, although we do zero damage to him. his fucking sword like a million his range is just insane I mean again this is kind of multiplayer boss ugh gotta watch out for the timing here Go after Twiggy Shay. He's got enough health.
Okay, that's... Goodness. Crown of the Ivory King. Let's just read them now. So you have these Lois souls. souls. Soul of the Knights of Lois. The Knights of Lois were taken by chaos and lost all sense of purpose and being. The few woeful souls that drudged, trudged back home were guided by some faint vestige of self. This soul is pure sorrow, and only Elsana can put it to rest. So yeah, I guess you collect the Lois souls, and then I guess something with... But they're like, it's insane. It's like... 50 Lois souls get you something. I'm not farming that. Ooh, Soul of the Ivor King is a, like, a great soul. Unlike these. Oh, I guess we didn't fight... We didn't fight Old Ivor King. Or, Old Iron King. We fought him in the real game. And we didn't fight the Sunken King. He was already gone. So this... Okay, it's just like he beat... Like, each king kind of defeats their realm by an acquiring a large soul. Anyway. Soul of the Ivory King of Elium Lois. The proud Ivory King was ever merciful and devoted himself to the protection of his great land until he was devoured by the flames of chaos. The wondrous soul of this great king can be used to acquire numerous souls. And of course we have the Ivory King. Crown of the Ivory King who once ruled this land. Far to the north, a king built a great cathedral to appease the raging flame. But when he sensed that degradation of his soul, he left without a word, leaving everything to Elsana, who had, unbeknownst, found a place at his side. But these were events of long ago, and today no one even remembers the king's name. Hmm, I wonder what the item is that you get that says he's from Ferosa. I thought it was the crown. Um... Let's see what Alsana has to say about all this. You've granted my one wish. Now, I have no regrets. I was born amidst the dark. Yes, we know. Long ago, in the depths of the abyss, my father perished. Yeah, I killed him. The dark shattered into tiny pieces, one of which was me. How frightened I was. A frail thing, born from but a splinter of dark. I felt that I might simply disappear. I am. The incarnation of my father's fears. Hmm. I saw that the king of this land was strong. I sought him only to sustain myself, to smother my fears. Now I realize that he may have known all along. Hmm. I was born of fear, and my lord provided comfort. And so, here I remain, heiress to my lord's wishes. 
watching over chaos. Until the end of time. So, you know, as I said, I was kind of like of the opinion that Alsana might have been manipulating uh, the Ivory King. And, of course, if she is a master manipulator, I don't know that we should believe any of the things that she says. But, I mean, she said that, um, you know, that she, you know, you know, the Ivory King might have known all along, which is obviously what happened to Vendrick. Um, he was aware of Nishandra's manusness is her darkness and sought to escape her which could be what the ivory king did here with the chaos um both of those could have been related to like nishander could have pushed ken uh, vendrick away maybe that's why he left at the height of the giant war um you know alsana might have pushed ivory king to destroy his whole kingdom but she's talking, she's very self-aware in general. I mean, unless, again, it's another manipulation tactic. You know, it's, she's talking about um, that she, it, I don't know if it's all shards of Manus or her in particular, you know. Um, you know, she is the embodiment of his fear or her Manus's fear. I assume Manus is... And Manus might not have a gender, but anyway, so, um, and, you know, she, she's starting to realize that maybe that there was a kind of balance between that and what the Ivory King gave her, even though she kind of sought to exploit him. Um, and it's a type of tale that we could put up, put upon Nadalia and, um, Ilana, you know, or Nishandra, you know, it's, uh, it could be that they all sought to kind of take control, take advantage, and that they all realized all along that they had some, that they were fulfilled by something with these men of power. I don't know. Um... But this definitely, this dialogue gives us a lot of insight to something that Nadalia couldn't tell us. Elsana certainly didn't tell us, and Nishandra didn't tell us. The knights of Aleonis were swallowed by the chaos. Where their souls still remain. I pray for their deliverance. Uh, similar to the Silver Knights and the Black Knights in Dark Souls 1, we had the Silver Knights, which were the, the kind of tested knights of uh, uh, Anne Orlando, and the knights that fought against the Chaos were blackened, charred from the Chaos. We have the regular Elium uh, Lois Knights that are silver, and we fought against the evil ones that kind of charred black from the chaos. Just a little parallel element there. The knights of Aleum were there so I pray for Um hmm. I thought there was another event here, namely Let these go away and we can go up there? I don't remember. We'll have to... Might have to investigate that. And do it in a odds and ends video. Okay, so... I guess the first thing we want to do here is... We want to read all of these... Uh, or find all of the the things you can make with this stuff. So, 
if you see bigger. Okay, nothing there. Nothing there. Yeah, he just has the one. That's too bad. I don't think I can like just run away from them, but I guess we could try. So I believe they all just come in. Maybe not all of them fall down then. Ugh. I guess I should have closed the door. That's probably what people do. That's how they do this. Okay, he went away. Okay. Need a tax to see these. Sword of Fabian, Knight of Elium Lois, this blade crafted with ivory ore native to the land, harnesses souls to slash at foes. Sir Fabian led the loyal knights of Elium Lois straight into the depths of chaos to exterminate the terrible things that dwelled there, but not one of the selfless knights returned. <laughs> Alter Great Sword of the Ivory King of Elium Lois. Wield with both hands to realize its full strength. It is said that the Ivory King was once the highest ranking knight in his home of Ferosa. Boom! There it is. Famed for its god of war. We also should read Ferrum's armor now. After taking his crown, they say he was the first to swing his sword in times of need, be it for his homeland or his people. So again, Ivory Kings from Ferosa. But he rules over Eliam Lois, which is Ferosa, and we think that Eliam Lois is related to Lordran. So I think Ferosa is Lordran, I think Drang Lake is Vinheim, etc. Melfia might be, or Lendelt might be Shulva, which might be uh, Thuriland, I don't know. Um, we read all those, and we read that, oh, there's this, aha, Sir of Suralon, Katana forged from the soul of Suralon, the captivating undulating design serves to enhance this weapon's mystical allure. Halan came from the east and soon became the Iron King's most trusted knight. When he departed, the old Iron King bequeathed Sir Halan's name to his Iron Warriors. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just go to Majula. So first I want to check these two to see if they have any more. You 
No. Lonely times. No. Are you sure? Um, and one thing I wanted to do, but I never did on one of the previous episodes, was buy the name engraved ring. Um, we'll look at that in a second. And I guess... We'll level up. Until do this for now. I'll get the ferrum stuff. I think I skipped it. Oh, here it is. Oh, maybe I should have all these in my inventory when I talk to the king. I never considered that. I'm just gonna grab all this in case it matters. Helmet worn by the Ferosa Lion Knights. The mighty Lion Knights, worshippers of the war god Faram, wore heavy armor and were feared for their nimble two-handed swordplay. But their legacy was cut short with the fall of Ferosa. Now, I haven't heard this talked about ever. But, you know, is Faram the name of the son, the firstborn? Because look at this. So we can put this on, and we can see the names of these gods. We have Nema, which is goddess of love. Galeb, which is God of Disease, but we know that God of Disease is um, Nido, but he's called Galeb. Kaitha, Goddess of Tears. Kreml, the God of Struggle. Evlana, Goddess of the Hunt, which we know is potentially not a god, and is Ferris, or the woman who inherited Ferris' stuff. Hanleth, Goddess of Bliss. Nar Alma, God of Blood, we know that. Zinder, God of Desire. Quella, God of Dream. And Caffrey, Goddess of Fortune. So, Goddess of Fortune, I mean, that could be Bounty and Fertility. That could be um, Guinevere. So, my point with all of this is just that Faram could be the name, the modern name, which is not exactly the name, but a name for. Um, the son's firstborn. I don't know if those are connected or whatever. Alright, and then we want to go and talk to the king now that we have all... Actually, there's one more that we should probably get. Before we, uh, we travel to him. All four that are covered in this game. And I want to be human. Ugh. The 
those guys. That episode was terrible. Permanently scarred from that, from lighting that torch. Okay. It's weird how they have the same mechanic in here and in Aldi's keep. But, whatever. Alright. Little bright bugs swarming his armor. What do you have to say, Vendrick? Seeker of fire, conqueror of dark. I too sought fire once. With fire, they say, a true king can harness the curse. Mm -hmm. A lie, but I knew no better. Seeker of fire, you know not the depth of dark within you. It grows deeper still. The more flame you covet. Flame. Oh, flame. I mean, that reminds me of what Macduff was talking about. <laughs> flame, dear flame. And how it is a, it's very analogous to humanity and such. Seeker of fire. I see you've subdued another foul creature. Yeah, I think I need to have him in my inventory. One of the father of the abyss spawn. That confounded quintessence of humanity. The abyss once had form, but then dissipated. The abyss once had form. And yet, traces of its existence endured. I guess that's Manus. Each fragment, thirsting for power, spread dark with no relent. My dear Chandra was one such fragment. Aha. Uh -huh. A feeble, tiny thing that thirsted for power more than any other. Driven by insatiable lust for a worthy vessel. So he's very conscious of it. He knows he's like, Nishandra is a shard of madness. He knows it. One day fire will fade and dark will become a curse. Men will be free from death, left to wander eternally. Dark will again be ours, and in our true shape, we can bury the false legends of your only. Is this our only choice? Seeker of fire, coveter of the throne. Seek strength. will follow. It's weird that that cut a cut scene. I'm gonna go back in and just make sure that I didn't miss anything there. Okay. I just can't go back in. So now... We have a weird special property of the King's Crown. Oh, I forgot how hideous they looked. Let's run back to Majula real quick. Uh, what am I doing? Look at that. That's a build. Alright, so... Now that we've gotten all three...
crowns and talk to Vendrick. Dun da da da. We don't hollow. We can kill ourselves as many times as we like, and we will never uh, lose our health. We will never like look like a corpse. There's that white dream, that white ring. I don't know that we got that. So that is now the secret of the crown. Kind of a nifty little thing. Um, so yeah, let us um, go and do one more episode where we take out all the NPCs. I'm gonna try my best to recall Who's who? I should have bought the fume sword if I ever wanted to make that, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna kill her last because she'll carry all of the. She'll carry all of the. What do you call it? Um, uh, armor that everyone's wearing. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to do that uh, in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and have a good one. Bye.